What is up everyone? It is Stephanie here with Infernal TV and I am bringing you Infernal TV's very special Rock Solid Showcase episode. I was very fortunate to be a panelist at the Rock Solid Pressure Annual Showcase. I got to view all of the local talent in St. Petersburg and Tampa and I chose five lucky bands to be featured on Infernal TV. So we're going to have two separate episodes. This is the first part, we're going to release a second part later. Now part one features Clover and Aegea, two bands that I can definitely see going places. So check out this interview that I did with Clover and you get to also see a little bit of their set. <laughs> Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I'm here right now with Clover. So, how are you guys? Awesome. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, awesome. Well, I mean, we're all at the Brass Mug right now. You're going to play a show, so I guess just describe the show you're playing and any expectations or anything. Who wants to take? Uh, uh, go ahead. We're about to play a show with uh, some awesome bands that we actually, some of the bands we met at the showcase that we played down in St. Pete. Um, uh, we're playing in third, uh, right after Mr. Handsome, which I dig a lot. Even though they're pretty, they're pretty uh, progressive, but we, I like them a lot. So, nice. but uh, yeah, we're gonna rock and roll. You guys, we're gonna play good tonight or what? Yeah, hold on. yeah you guys feeling it? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna give uh, hard ons to men. That's what. We're gonna do. <laughs> All right, awesome. And now let's just talk about the history of the band a little bit. I know that, um, you know, you all, like when I was reading your biography, you definitely have, you know, a really rich history with the band. So I guess just discuss that a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Landon, about years ago, he, he created the band in Cuba. Uh, I was in the band in the beginning. I me and Jay, we joined the band uh, years after. And, uh, well, we, we played in Cuba for like uh, 10 years, something like that, yeah, playing a lot all over the, the island. And uh, in 2014, I guess, something we just decided to move to, to the States, trying to look for better opportunities for, for the band. Because, uh, I don't know, you know, we did, it, did everything in Cuba. We played all the festivals all over the, the country. And uh, we just decided, uh, all right, this is uh, the best option for the band, so let's just go to, uh, to the States and Tampa. You know, it's a real metal place, and, uh, and here we are. Like, so uh, we've been playing here for like uh, three, four years now. More than three years, yeah. All right, I'm terrible with numbers, so I'm sorry, guys. And uh, yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, we got uh, some good friends here. We got some, a lot of uh, support with friends and everything, and yeah. 
That's it for now. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> All right, awesome. And now this year you got a couple new members, so I'll just hand the mic over and you two can discuss yourselves. I'm Brad, play guitar. I was in a band called Must Not Kill for a long time around here. And uh, I also did some torn and was in the band All Out War that was on Victory Records. And uh, mm. yeah, you may kiss the ring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun uh, joining up with these guys. It's uh, definitely a, a different style than Must Not Kill that I was used to doing that band for over 14 years. But I just like playing with these guys. They're a lot of fun to jam with. And I've known this guy for seems like ever now. So. It's a lot of fun and uh, having a good time, so taking it. So, here you go. My name is Aaron Hollingsworth and I play the bass guitar and I put my foot through the stage on occasion. Uh, but yeah, same thing, I played in Must Not Kill and I, you know, I moved here from Texas playing in country bands and stupid shit like that and now we play metal because that's, you know, go with the times, right? But yeah, we ran into these guys while we were playing around and they were blowing us away at every show. I mean, okay, maybe they weren't blowing, they were doing really well and we were doing well and it was a no-brainer when, when the opportunity came, came up and uh, they asked us to, to, uh, to join up and we, ever since then, it's, the chemistry's been amazing and uh, we had a lot of great stuff coming out. We've been writing like crazy, recording videos and uh, recording songs, trying to... Uh, Trying to get things going for another uh, another small EP uh, into another big album, so that's what we're on. All right, awesome. And I saw you. You mentioned the showcase, the Rock Solid Pressure Showcase, and I was one of the panelists. That's how I discovered this band, and I was really impressed by your live performance. I mean, not only did you sound great, but Honestly, you're one of my favorite bands that performed the whole showcase. So, I guess in your words, describe what a Clover show is like. Uh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> All right. Uh, basically, what we try to do is put ourselves out there and give our best. So, uh, as a fanboy that I was, and I'm still am, I when I see a band, I don't want to see people like standing there and like I don't know, just playing because they just playing we want to like uh, like the people be likable the uh with a lot of energy on stage because this is a this rock and roll is about that so we transmit our energy like a positive energy to everybody so uh we try to be to be like that so it's, that's probably what I, like a clover show, uh, show is so This was mentioned earlier, but uh, the band originally was formed in Cuba, and then you all relocated here to Tampa. So, do you think that there was any change in the band during this transition, or um, you know, like did you experiment more with your sound or anything, or do you think you're all just kind of you know still doing the same that you were doing back when <laughs> you were still in Cuba? Yeah, yeah. My turn. Your turn, buddy. <laughs> Look at the camera. Smile. You make the. Make What's up, guys? Yeah. Uh, it's a naked woman and tell us. Yeah, uh, we definitely have a lot of changes in our music. 
we still sound, sound the same, like a heavy metal band, but we, we used to be more like, use more melodics, vocals, and and that's a fire word truck. And then more, we were getting more you know, like more heavy music because of the vocals now becomes more deep. Michael is uh, trying to do something like more aggressive with the vocals, and we're trying to do something. When we start here, we try to do something with the eight string guitars. So definitely, the music is heavier now. What do you think, guys? Yeah, basically, we we uh, back in Cuba, we used to play like some. Metal ish style of music with uh, uh, clean vocals and stuff like that. But as soon as we move here, you know, it's the death metal land, so we love a, a bunch of death metal bands too. And deathcore was in the rising at that time, so we, we think it was uh, kind of take our, our own approach to deathcore. So we try to write that way, but we in right now in the with these two guys joining the band is kind of like a like a mixture, uh, like a fusion or something. Uh, our music has always been like that, like a fusion, because we don't we don't we don't get ourselves in like just one genre. We try to expand our horizon to play different things and elements of different styles of music. And right now we're trying to because Brad used to play in a hard, legendary hardcore band and he's all into hardcore and things like that. So we love that style too. So we can try to implement that more in our in our style of music. So uh, basically, we always try to do find uh, new things to do. Uh, we don't we don't like to be like just we play this and that's it. We try to implement more kinds of uh, you know elements of different styles and things like that. All right, awesome, and I think that'll really, I think that'll really reflect on the newer music that we're writing too, and um, some of the newer songs that we are playing in the set now kind of reflect more of like our contribution to the band as well. So awesome. it, it's going to be cool. I, I can't wait to record a new EP. It's going to be neat. So. All right, perfect. So this is the last question. I'll just hand the mic over to you all. You can promote whatever. You know, I know you mentioned an EP. If you have any other shows, just take it away. We're playing next week on the 16th at the Kelly Sky Bar in Sarasota. And then uh, Venoms in Newport Ritchie um, on January 13th. And then maybe a special something um, a little bit after that, the next weekend. And you'll have to visit us on Facebook at uh, Facebook Clover. Clover Band, Clover Band, Facebook Clover Band. And 2018 in yeah, 2018 is going to be pretty neat. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, C H L O V E R, um, C H Lover, and uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're actually we've been in the studio on and off, uh, just trying to uh, you know get everybody's parts through of uh, some of the new music that we're writing, and we're in the we're in the we're in the choke yourself, uh, <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears uh, version of writing right now. So, um, uh, but we kiss and make up. We're good. But uh, yeah, those are uh, look for us in Cuba um, coming very soon. So, uh, um, and you know, yeah, YouTube channel, bro. available for the, the YouTube yeah, YouTube uh, Clover Band YouTube, and uh, I think our Twitter Twitter is Clover Band One on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pictures of Landy. Um, <laughs> it's just him a lot, just being by himself. And it's, no, it's good. We're, uh, we're really happy we please anytime we're out anywhere, invite us to shows, get us out, come out to our shows and let's meet, let's be friends. Uh, we are not above uh, uh, anything when it comes to this. We want to connect with every single person that uh, likes our music or, you know, likes uh, our faces, so. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, and thank you all. And I know Aaron was discussing your social media, but I will include all the links in the description of this video or on the website of whether you're, uh, regardless of how you're viewing this video. So yes, definitely keep up with Clover, get their new EP when it comes out, go to their shows. You know, it does seem like these guys are gonna be doing some traveling. So whether you're here in Florida or in Cuba, keep up with what they're doing. And stay metal. Thank you for watching this interview. Yeah. <laughs>
you all enjoyed that set with Clover. I could definitely see those guys going somewhere, especially in the extreme metal community. Now, Aegea is a lot different, but I can see this band going places, headlining shows, you name it. So first, check out this interview that I did with Aegea. Hey everyone, it is Stephanie here with Infernal TV, and I'm here right now with Aegea. So how are you? Good. 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 Doing great. Good. Doing great. All right, awesome. Well, let's just go ahead and go right into the new song. You all just released a new track, so just yeah. talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah, we just uh, just released a new single off of a uh, new EP, Through the Static, uh, Bastard's Son. Uh, it's the first track that we leaked, and um, we're pretty stoked about it. We like, we're putting together a bunch of influences on this new EP, working with uh, Matt LaPlante. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're trying to kind of blur the genres between like that... Uh, 90s metal and like that trap scene we're trying to like kind of gear more in that lane I know what do you think well what I think uh, you know and something we've worked with Matt a lot with is really trying to get like that party vibe going into the metal you know so like sort of like the browning or things like that but push it even a little bit further um, not to say we want to go mainstream but we want to be able to take rock and mute and metal into a more uh, mainstream scene and instead of it being so niche and so uh, at this point formulaic, you know, so that's sort of, th this uh, new release is what we're considering to be a transition record to get into that sort of niche and sound. So, you got anything to say, buddy? Not really, I mean, me personally, <laughs> I, I just like to do what feels right. And uh, this has been something that I've been like really kind of fighting for and trying to find uh, for the past couple of years. And I just happen to get lucky enough to find people that can either do it themselves or we're really on the same wavelength as myself to actually make it happen. Especially, yeah. especially with that single, for sure. For sure. All right. Awesome. Uh, party metal. I'm totally down with that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So now, will the whole EP follow that kind of like exactly what Brandon was describing? Or do you think you kind of go like is a little bit more complex, diverse? Do you kind of have like different influences or what all can you say about the EP right now? Um, I guess uh, we, we were trying to like stem from like all of our heavier influences on this one and like all the material, especially going into it it's only a three song so i mean it's, we can't branch out uh too far but they they follow like not to say the same formula but you know heavier here at points and like keeping the things that we like in metal um and then trying to add something new that keeps us interested you know what i'm saying um yeah, give me the mic <laughs> i mean i would say um that for us, you know, like some some references we try to really bring into are like the DED, the Dead stuff, or you know, nothing more. These sort of newer rock sounds that are bringing a lot more elements into it than just oh, it's it's heavy as shit. Uh, obviously, that was definitely for the three of us. That was a huge uh, cornerstone for our music. Is just you know, high school, just as heavy as possible, death metal, thrash metal. You know, um, so there's those elements are there. Uh, but again, it's sort of we're trying to take that and make it more presentable to a more broad audience as opposed to just, oh, if, we, if you like this shit, you'll love our new heavy, blah, 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 you know. So it's not about that anymore, I guess. You know, maybe when we started the band, it was, and then we sort of learned very quickly that we have a much broader context than your average rock band or whatever. So. All right, cool. Well, now what I will do is I will go ahead and pass the microphone around and you all just discuss your musician background and yeah. then we can go into talking about the formation of the band. Apparently there's a great story behind this. I'm, yeah. I'm dying to hear it. Absolutely. Uh, so um, I started guitar when I was like six and it was like metal from the beginning with my parents. Um, been in like bands since I was like 12 and uh, kind of did some some touring and then uh got got off like my last tour in like i think 2013 met this guy and uh that's when we started kind of formulating this like baby um but Which was much different than it is now <laughs> right right i guess that's that's all for my background uh, up to this point yeah. all right so uh musically you know i come from a musical family um i actually started in a much different genre than i'm in now uh started really in like the funk 
stuff. You know, my my it sounds sounds crazy. Uh, my my uncle was a touring drummer. Oh, me too. Yeah. So my uncle was a touring funk drummer, jazz drummer, and he was always kind of like that guy I was looking up to. I uh, actually tried to play guitar when I was a kid. Realized I had absolutely no. Uh, could not do that at all and I found drums and it just kind of clicked for me uh, and then pretty much the same story as John you know just immediately started to get myself in as many bands as I could just practice my ass off in my bedroom um, and yeah here we are so and me uh, musically singing's really just it's been it and it's been what's kind of been in my heart uh, my entire life ever since I was actually old enough to talk um, yeah, my earlier influences were very rock based. Um, I did skew off into uh, hip hop, R and B for a while. Um, Running with the devil. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the song that uh, I knew I was in love with rock and roll is at my grandmother's house, and uh, uh, I hear "Running with the Devil" on, and I'm like, "What the hell was that? Go back, go back, go back!" And I just sat there. <laughs> I sat there, this little boy, just glued, sitting directly in front of the TV, like, "That's what I want. That's what I want to be." So uh, I was uh, I got off tour with like a tech metal band uh, called Entity, and uh, came to Sam Ash, met Brandon, who was like drums. He just got off tour with Prince, actually, and like we met. We were kind of like hanging out at work one day, and we're just like, "Hey, dude, you want jam?" And like while we were supposed to be working, uh, we would just uh -oh. take that back room and start like jamming out some new material. And uh, we kept getting in trouble because we weren't working, so we thought we'd like maybe start something. And uh, we had actually two different guys in the band, um, Dallas Marlowe and Joshua Prokris, who is like um, two of the uh, original members and no longer with us. But uh, we started just like trying to formulate what we're going to do as far as like music. And uh, we ended up catching the eye of uh, Paul Trust. Um, he did like uh, Madball, um, Star Set, some o some other guys, and kind of helped us out uh, with the that first DP. Got the ball pushed. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it definitely it was a bunch of trial and tribulations through that because it was just like the most hair pulling uh, ordeal we could have gone through, but really helped shape the band. And then uh, kind of we me and Brandon were really wanting to take the sound and go a different way from the EP because people can know it's from like hashtag honesty to um, through the static it's like just a big departure from the previous sound and then uh, along the way we we lost uh, Josh and he had you know responsibilities he already had you know a couple kids that he was taking care of and so we got Chris which was one of the funniest stories thing that I've ever gotten a band bay from so we were like trying to we're like had to cancel a bunch of shows we lost singer and i put out craigslist ads newspaper ads everything and i was our emails getting flooded with like the craziest of homeless people like the, <laughs> like the people sending us like voice recordings that they take on their phone of them just humming to the song and like i got the job right so we were like we we're like all right guess we're never gonna find a fucking singer uh, can i curse on here okay good <laughs> And uh, so finally, after like completely hating it, well, I get an email. He's like, hey, um, saw your Craigslist ad. Um, I'm currently in another band. And, uh, you know, check out my video. So I, I checked him out and I was like, well, at least he didn't tell me he was homeless and uh, needed $50 to get to the audition. And I immediately had a good feeling. So it gives me his number. And uh, I'll go, okay, guys, I'm so excited. I think we, like, found found a good candidate. And we had already, like, tried out, like, three guys who were, whew, it, it was yeah, it was rough. Yeah. And then, uh, so the day comes for when he's coming for his audition, silence. Like, nothing. And I'm like, all right, guys, well, I guess, like, we're just blowing we're, him we're up. fucked. And we're yeah. blowing him up. No, and we're thinking, oh, this guy's just a crackhead or something. Yeah. Right, right. So, and then I get, like, some random number starts, like, texting me. He's like, hey. I'm good for today. And I'm guessing that was him. We go to the space, he shows up, and I guess the rest is history at this point. But, uh. I had broken my phone, and uh, right after, like, <laughs> talking with him, I'm like, crap, these guys are gonna think I'm not interested. So, uh. <laughs> You know, in the midst of freaking out, I started looking up all these different apps I could use. And so one of them was like, it gave me a number and I could text and call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I hit him up. Oh, 
Yeah, so I mean, uh, and then also, uh, you know, with that all being said, we, uh, the second person we lost um, after Chris joined the band was our original bassist, Dallas Marlowe, who really did a lot for us to get the band off the ground with the licensing and, you know, all the back end stuff. And uh, he got to a point where he just couldn't do it anymore. It got, it got to be too much work for him. So he had to part ways, and we're thinking, well, how are we going to, because he was a very technical player, you know, so we're thinking, you know, man, how are we going to find a guy who can keep up with his playing and be a part of the songwriting process? I mean, that's a lot of, that's a big shoe to fill, you know, so we just randomly had Spence uh, message us on Facebook one day, and it was like instant, it was like instant goal. He showed up to one practice, and it was like, we immediately gel with him, Chris gel with him, John gel with him, I gel with him. Yeah, it was like he was just waiting in the shadows for Dallas to leave, and it was like the weirdest thing. And we noticed the, the more that the three of us became cohesive as a band, the easier it got to find people to come into the band. Like when we originally lost our singer, John and I must have gotten through 50 guys. That we literally, it was like just the dudes were coming off the middle of the street. And then when we, when we got to the phase where we were looking for a bassist, it was like three guys in, we found Spence, and it was a perving match. So, you know, that's definitely something to be said is as this band has progressed, we as individuals have become a lot closer and, and, and like we've mind melded or whatever, you know, the decision making is way more, it's way easier now. Like in the beginning of the band, it was always like, well, you know, what's the right way to go? And everybody had different opinions. And now it's like everybody's just firing on all four cylinders. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, being in a band, you're all married, I guess. I can walk into <laughs> a practice and... Uh I love telling people this because it's like probably the most frustrating things about you, you freaking musicians. So they are so on the same wavelength that when I'm walking up in their practice, I think that they're, they've been, you know, writing this or creating this new song for like weeks without me knowing. And like, no, we just started putting it together right, right when you walked in the door. It is so frustrating, but that's how tight they are. And uh, I think that's really kind of been the secret to I guess what success we've gotten so far, like, you know, how we gel and perform on stage is like we really, we really like each other. Yeah. You know? There you go. Absolutely. We were actually friends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes all the difference, right? Yeah. And well, now let's go into next year. I mean, well, other than the album release or the EP release, what all can you, uh, I guess, say we should expect from a GIA next year? Um, definitely. So through the stacks can be out, uh, January 20th. Right. And, uh, so all retailers, iTunes, Spotify, all streaming platforms. Um, so we're like, we're trying to push that release as much as possible, uh, hit the road, um, do some, a bunch of out of Florida dates to really start getting that buzz going. Cause uh, otherwise we're, if you know, dead fish in the water. So, but, um, other than that, we got a whole new merch line that we're trying to push with the, the new record and, uh, I honestly trying to expand maybe like try to play some metal shows uh outside of the metal scene with some some new trap artists that we're working with right now graphic novel yeah yeah go ahead talk about that you guys know more about okay that. so um one thing also that we're trying to sort of get in the works is we have a comic book artist that we're working with and he's he's also worked because i'm the primary graphic designer or whatever for the band and uh, him and I have been putting our heads together and coming up with some really cool stuff. And so when John and I started the band a couple of years ago, we've always had this sort of like this narrative that we used as like a precursor to get the band moving. And now we're at the point where we're like, man, that was a really cool idea. What's turning into like a comic book or a graphic novel kind of a thing. So that hopefully by next year, we can get that off the ground and make that a part of the music. Yeah, yeah. So that that's going to be, you know, trying to get it into like video game realm, you know, graphic novel realm things like that just trying to get more into branching out other than just the music so all right so this is the last question just you know say whatever you want you can promote something you can say hi or do whatever you want uh yeah so check out uh through the static out on all platforms january 20th and uh hit up our website for that pre-order uh on the first I'd like to thank Matt LaPlante, big time man. Freaking awesome, dude. Um, yeah, support your troops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I guess last but not least is, uh, you know, just stay tuned. We, we have a lot of plans made, and we're looking to deliver the big shot. You know, we're, we're, we work hard, so hope you guys are ready for it. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. And Agia obviously has a lot of awesome stuff going on this year. New EP coming out. I mean, there's some other things that I'm sure the guys can say yet, but I mean, they have a comic book. 
So that's super cool, right? And I mean, you know, these guys definitely have the potential to make it big and they're going to keep working and then they will, they won't stop working until they get there. So definitely keep up with what they're doing. And obviously they're going to be starting a new, I don't know, a new subgenre in metal, party metal. I, I, I like that. We'll, we'll, go with it. we'll go with it. I like it. Hell yeah. All right. I'll, hell yeah, party metal. All right. We'll stay party metal, everyone. Stay party metal. <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed that playthrough and Brandon and John are definitely extremely talented musicians and I really enjoyed filming that song. So the next song is Bastard Son and that is another one that really displays their talent and is genuinely a really great song. Check out a GS playthrough for Bastard Son. Thank you all so much for checking out the showcase special episode of Infernal TV. I'm going to include all the social media links for Clover and Aegea in the description of this video and on the Infernal TV website, just so you can keep up with everything these bands are doing. And while they are smaller bands local to the St. Petersburg and Tampa area, both bands have a lot going on. They are definitely the rising acts. So never forget to support local bands and your local scene because who knows when your local band will be getting press and will be doing big things. Stay tuned for part two of the showcase episode. Stay metal.